Praise him and we'll worship him tonight. Let's, let's give him all the praise and all the glory. It's a wonderful scene. Pastor Irwin. Bless the Lord. Good again to be in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I'm going to sing a great old hymn. If you're using a hymn book, it's 309. Will your anchor hold? In the storms of life, when the clouds unfold, their wings of strife, we have an anchor. Bless his lovely name. So let's everyone stand in the house. Let's forget about every distraction and worship the Lord Jesus Christ then. Will your
our gracious and heavenly Father. We thank you this evening that we're coming to one who never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, our wonderful Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We come pleading his blood, the precious blood, the sinless blood he shed for us when he gave his life. He laid it down of himself. He, no one took it from him. You're a wonderful Lord that you should come from the realms of glory to redeem us, to save us, to bring us into the family and the fold of God. We bless you tonight. We say as the psalmist, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You see this wonderful, vast congregation gathered in your house and in your presence. Every life, every heart, every heartache, every pain, and every sorrow. You see them tonight. Lord, would you minister in the worship, in the prayers, in the lovely expounding of the gospel, that your word will meet every need, every heart will be touched, every life will be dealt with, Every unsaved person will see and realize their night need tonight of the Savior. Bless those that will minister in song. Bless our worship. And Lord, we say sincerely, take joy, my King, in what you hear and what you see. And at the end of this night, Grand will see men and women coming to Christ. We ask it in your holy and precious name. Amen. And everyone said... Amen. You may be seated. Never was love so tender. Never was love so strong. Even in His surrender. His love would carry on And as his heart was breaking He was mending lives And as he hung there dying He was giving us Chains of death all crumbled And love rolled the stone away And as he reigns in glory He's still mending lives And if your heart is dying
Thank you, Gregory. That was lovely. <coughs> Got a lovely voice. Wish I could sing like that. <laughs> Wonderful. Right now, we're going to lift the Lord's offering. Would you dig deep and give generously to the work of the Lord? As many people depend on this church as they're serving the Lord in Christ's harvest field. Pastor Norman will lead us in an offering song. Thank you very much. Bless the Lord. His love is stronger. Greg was singing. Let's sing no one, no one like Jesus. There's no one like him tonight. That's why we love him and that's why we serve him. Let's give as the Lord has blessed us and the brethren are waiting upon us. Then no one like Jesus. No one. his lovely name. Just before pastor comes and brings the word to us this evening, will you welcome again the Tabernacle Choir?
when I look back at what I thought was living, I'm amazed at the price I chose to pay. And to think I ignored what really mattered. Cause I thought the sacrifice would be too great I found the cross was calling even then And even though we're too dying to survive Never felt so much alive. For I am crucified with Christ, and yet I live. Not I, but Christ that lives within me. This cross will never ask for more than I.
Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Choir. Let's show them our appreciation once more. I'm going to read God's Word. Will you turn with me, please, to the first epistle of Peter, chapter 5. Don't want any more moving about, please. First Peter, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 6. The apostle says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, <clears throat> that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And we know tonight that the Lord will bless this remarkable portion from his own word. Let's open our hearts. Father, we ask you that your Holy Spirit shall pervade this service, that every infernal spirit, every demon spirit shall be brought under our control, and that your people will be enlightened, and that men and women will be touched by your power and by your presence, that demons will leave men and women, and they will be set free. And we're asking you also that men and women will live a greater life in Christ in the days that lie ahead. Set your people free. These things we ask in Jesus' lovely and holy name. Amen. And everybody said, I want <clears throat> to base my remarks upon Peter's statement in our reading this evening. The apostle says in verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Here the apostle says to the believers of his day, and to the believers in the 21st century, we have an adversary. We have an enemy who seeks to devour us, who seeks to destroy us, and we must always remember this. When I thought about this, I came to the realization God's people need an eye-opener. <clears throat> And tonight, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I trust that you will receive an eye-opener. This, the, the type of eye-opener that Elisha's servant got in the city of Dothan. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and 17, we are told, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. In this Christian conflict, there is more than meets the eye. I'm going to repeat that again. In this Christian conflict, there is more 
than meets the eye. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says, We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. And tonight, we are going to look at the things which are not seen. Again, he says in Ephesians 6, 11, and 12, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the methods of the devil. Here the Apostle Paul, as well as Peter, mentions our adversary, the devil. Listen to the Apostle Paul again in Ephesians 6 and 11 and 12. He says, for we wrestle. Did you hear that? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Note that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Greek New Testament has it, wicked spirits in high places. Some of you haven't realized it, but you're fighting against wicked spirits in high places. That's why you are continually down. Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus knew to look beyond flesh and blood to the controlling powers. Watch this in Matthew 16 and 23. He is talking about the cross. He is talking about his suffering. And Peter comes and actually shakes him and says, you're not going to go to the cross. Listen to his reply. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter was a believer, recently blessed, in verse 17, and ordained to a great ministry and given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But brothers and sisters, Christ said, get thee behind me, Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, when I talk to the organ grinder, I don't want the monkey to butt in. And Satan is the organ grinder, and the people are the monkeys. I came to the conclusion how much trouble we could resolve if this lesson sunk in our hearts tonight. It's not flesh and blood, but wicked spirits. What is happening in your home for years? <clears throat> Have you ever wondered? What is happening in your job for years? <clears throat> Have you ever wondered? <clears throat> Look beyond flesh and blood tonight. <coughs> Watch this. In one aspect, I'm going to repeat that. In one aspect, it was Judas who betrayed Christ. But in another aspect, it was Satan. Listen to Luke chapter 22 and verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas. Don't you see the combination? Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray them unto them. Satan was speaking through Judas to the chief priests. And there are people who are speaking to us, but it's not them who are speaking to us. It is the evil one that is speaking. I repeat, we must learn to look beyond flesh and blood and see the power behind it. Watch this. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 3, in one aspect it was Ananias and his wife Sapphira who lied to the Holy Ghost. But in another aspect it was Satan. Here again is the combination. Listen to Peter. Ananias, why has Satan Fill thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Don't you see here the controlling power in Ananias and Sophia? Who is controlling you tonight? Who is controlling you tonight, sir? You must know who is controlling you. Watch this. Satan causes calamities to befall God's people. 
Revelation chapter 2, the Lord Jesus said to the little church at Smyrna, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. <clears throat> now, it's not a remarkable statement. He says, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Notice, not the judge, nor the jailer. They are only incidentals, but the devil. Remember the woman who was bowed down together, who came into the synagogue when the master was preaching in Luke's gospel. When he saw her, we are told, he went down <coughs> and he laid hands on her and she was made straight. Now listen to the master in Luke chapter 13 and 16. He called her this daughter of Abraham. In other words, the woman of the chosen sea, the woman of the chosen race, this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound lo these 18 years. For 18 years, this woman was bound by Satan. Christ saw beyond the woman's malady and discerned the cause of her malady, which was Satan. Have you ever, ever wondered what has happened to you? Start to think seriously. Start to pray about this, and God will show you what is behind all this. Brothers and sisters, like Elisha's servant, we need our eyes opened. Only the Spirit of the living God can do that. Our eyes must be open to the activities of Satan and to those he is possessing and using. Satan is alive and well, and he's working very hard in these last days because Revelation chapter 12 tells us he knoweth he hath but a short time. Watch this. If you turn to 1 Timothy 4 and 1, you'll hear Paul talking about, watch this, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You never hear this mentioned. He talks about seducing spirits <clears throat> and doctrines of devils. Spirits that are seducing God's people. Spirits that are in the church and doctrines of devils. And listen, I am listening sometimes to doctrines of devils spoken by evangelical ministers. Satan has smashed many a local church this way. But here's something that never fails to amaze me and trouble me. Why is it some professing believers' lives, they can never show you how God has used them and made them a blessing. Yet, they have allowed themselves to become an instrument of the devil. Sister, I want to ask you, how long are you saved? Have you ever done anything for the Lord? No, why? Mm. Brother, how long are you saved? Have you ever done anything for the Lord? No, not really. I'm weak. Why? Mm. Mm. But yet, you have contributed to scandal because Satan is a scandaler. Mm. You have contributed to gossip. You have contributed to judge people. And Satan is a judge. Mm. Brother and sister tonight, <coughs> we need <coughs> to look beyond <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the controlling powers. I urge you to be careful. The devil is on the loose. And I want to emphasize that to each and every one of you tonight. The church is at war, and we are at war with the devil. Never let that thought leave you. But too often, our cunning adversary has fooled us into fighting each other. <clears throat> He has fooled us in fighting each other, and we have forgotten the kingdom of God and the claims of the kingdom of God and what we are to do for the kingdom of God. Many of us are killed by so-called friendly fire. Mm. Heard about some young British troops in Basra killed by friendly fire, killed by <coughs> the Americans. Mm. They didn't mean it, but they killed him. Mm. Killed by friendly fire. That has happened through all the wars. Men and women killed by friendly fire. And that is happening 
in the Christian church tonight. Men and women are being killed by friendly fire instigated by the devil. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Notice the word carnal, not natural weapons, not guns or whatever. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We must look beyond the flesh and fight Goliath and not our brethren. And if we can constantly do this, we will keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace in this great house. Now watch this. Satan hindered Paul the apostle. A mighty man of God like that, yes. Satan hindered him. Listen to Paul's own words in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18. Wherefore we, that is him and Timothy and Luke, wherefore we would have come on to you, even I, Paul, once and again, or I made an effort to come the first time, I made an effort to come the second time, but Satan hindered us. <clears throat> Here he says, Satan hindered us. I don't know how he did it, but the word for hindered means obstacle. <clears throat> Satan put obstacles in the way. Sure, life besieged by obstacles. <clears throat> Has obstacles been put in your way? Maybe I'm talking to a man tonight that would love to trust the Savior, <clears throat> but obstacles are put in your way. Those obstacles are put in by Satan. <clears throat> Sir, listen, come to Christ tonight, and Christ will remove the obstacle. <sighs> What does God's people say? <clears throat> Satan, says Paul, hindered us. Watch this. Satan invades Holy Ghost churches like emphasis. Satan invades the Metropolitan Tabernacle. He's invaded it many times over the 50 years that I have pastored this place. I'm going to say things tonight that may shock you and may trouble you, but nevertheless, I'm going to say them. I'm getting old now so I can say things and get away with them. <clears throat> I'm going to say things tonight that may trouble you. <clears throat> Satan invades Holy Ghost churches like Ephesus. In 1 Timothy 5 and 15, Paul says to Timothy, some are already turned aside after Satan. And do you know who was turned aside after Satan? If you read the context, it was young women. He was talking about young women. He says, seek to marry, but those that don't marry, he says, they blaspheme and they get away from God. <clears throat> and he says, even so they turn away from the Lord and they're turned aside to Satan. Now, you read the context. You read that chapter. And this is who Paul is addressing himself to. And you know, it's sad to see lovely young women turning aside to Satan. It's sad to see lovely young men turning aside to Satan because they're disappointed in life or something didn't work out for them. Paul is saying this to Timothy. And still, <coughs> these young women were church members. Satan's targets are Christians. Soon as I go out here tonight, he'll be after me. I don't care. He's been after me for years, but I'm still here. Mm. Satan's targets are Christians. He already has sinners who are captured by him at his will. But brother, sister, he's after you. He's after your home. He's after your family. He's after your loved ones. Remember how he watched Job? We have heard about Job over these weeks. Job's godly life troubled him. Job's godly, dedicated life irritated him. And that's why he attacked him. But watch this. Satan zeroes in on church officers. Yes, elders and deacons. Satan zeroes in on church officers, church pastors, church deacons, church elders. Listen to Paul. In 1 Timothy 3 and 7, speaking of church officers, he said, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Mm. 
Hey, the context of that is church officers and church pastors and elders. The context of our other one was church members like young women who have turned aside to Satan. Now he's warning that church officers could fall into the snare of the devil. And what is makes a snare? Pride is a big snare. Mm. Pride. Mm. There's some of us and we've forgotten the hole of the pit from whence we were digged and the rock from whence we were hewn. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you tonight, do you know what you are? You're a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to say it again. Do you know what you are? You're a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to say it once more. Do you know what you are? You are a sinner saved by grace. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Some of us <clears throat> have forgotten these things. Verse 6 of 1 Timothy 3 says, Not a novice. Note that word, novice. That is one newly come to the faith. Don't promote one that's just saved, he says. Don't. If a church pastor promotes one who's just saved, he's wrong. If a church pastor promotes a young woman who's just saved, he's wrong. He's wrong. He says, not a novice, one that has newly come to the faith. Listen, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. In other words, pastor who's listening to me on the internet, if you promote a young convert, Satan's out to pull him down and he will. You heed what Paul says, not a novice. <clears throat> Try him. See his faithfulness or her faithfulness over the years and then promote him. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Remember, pride was the devil's sin. It caused rebellion in heaven. Let nobody here tonight possess the devil's sin. Mm. Do you possess the devil's sin, pride? It's amazing the many times that Paul mentions the devil in his epistles. Brothers and sisters, he's still around. Let's watch out for his attacks. But let me tell you the secret of victory for every child of God here that is under attack. But you ask, Pastor, is victory possible? The Lord Jesus said it is. He said to his disciples in Luke chapter 10, verses 17 and 20. Now listen to this. He says, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> Say, Ak, I know that. No, you don't know it. I'm going to say it slowly. Behold, I give you power over all, say all, all the power of the enemy. Not some of his power, over all the power of the enemy. In Mark chapter 16 and 17, the Lord Jesus says we can cast out devils in his name. And in 1 Corinthians 12 and 10, Paul says, the Holy Spirit gives to the body of Christ the gift called discerning of spirits. What is discerning of spirits? Let me put it in a sentence. Discerning of spirits is God's spirit enabling one to know what spirit is being manifested. And the trouble with many pastors, they've listened to men who are controlled by an evil spirit. They're listening to deacons that are controlled by evil spirits. They're listening to elders that are controlled by evil spirits. Men that do not seek God, men who have no prayer life, men who have no godliness in their lives, men who have no sanctification. And thus the church is turned upside down. That's why we need discerning of spirits in the church. Your willpower strong as it is, is not enough. You need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You cannot fight Goliath in Saul's armor. Did you hear what I said? You cannot fight Goliath in Saul's armor. Remember, Saul put his armor on young David. And young David, it says, is said to go. And he says, I cannot go with these because I have not proved them. But what had he proved? He had proved the Bethlehem hills. He had proved his solitude with God. He had proved the slingshot. He had proved the staff. 
He had proved the anointing of God that Samuel had anointed him in Bethlehem. He says, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. God's plan is the anointing of his Spirit. Listen to Paul again in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. And you're listening well. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God's plan for overcoming Satan and spirits is foolish to man, but it works. Mm -hmm. It's foolish. And I know the enemy is saying to some of you, he's talking foolishness. I'm not. I'm talking the truth. This works. For instance, the falling down of the walls of Jericho is a fantastic example. Jericho, its walls are two chariots could race abreast on. Here are a company of people marching round its walls for seven days, carrying a golden chest called the Ark, and the walls collapsed. Mm. Not a narrow was fired. Not a spear was fired. Not a sword was taken out of its sheath. Just Judah praised the Lord, and they marched round the walls seven times a day. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> and the walls collapsed. Watch this. What made Dagon, the Philistine god, a demon prince, fall? He fell because the ark of the testimony. You see, the Philistines captured the ark, and they brought it into the house of Dagon, and they put the ark beside Dagon, and they closed the door that night, and they went to bed. But when they got up the next morning, Dagon had fallen down before the ark. Because inside that wooden golden chest was the manna, the law, and Aaron's rod that budded, plus blood upon the lid. And they didn't know what they were carrying. That little wooden chest covered with gold was a lovely type of the Lord Jesus Christ. This destroyed Dagon in 1 Samuel chapter 5 and overthrew Jericho with its walls so thick that I said two chariots could race abreast on them. But we must never forget. Do you hear me, little housewife, tonight? <clears throat> Do you hear me, young mother? We must never forget Satan is a defeated foe. <laughs> Will you shout that out? He didn't hear that. <clears throat> Are you ready? <clears throat> he is a defeated foe. Paul, in Colossians 2 and 15, says about the Lord Jesus, and having spoiled, is not an amazing word? And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, over them in his cross. I repeat, Satan is a defeated foe. In 1 Samuel 5, verses 3 to 4, when Dagon fell before the ark, we are told they set him up in his place again. They took Dagon and set him up in his place again. There's some of you, and you've drifted away from God and Satan has taken over. Do you know what you've done? You've reinstated Satan, and you've put him <coughs> in his place again. <coughs> so the Philistines took Dagon, put him in his place again, and closed the door. But when they got up the next morning, the ark was still there, but Dagon had fallen before the ark. This time, his head and his hands were broken off, only a stump of Dagon was left. Hallelujah. Dagon's head, hands, were cut off, and only a stump was left to him. And Luke chapter 11, verses 20 and 21, Jesus calls Satan the strong man, but Christ says he is stronger than him. Did you hear what he said in Luke 11? He says, yes, Satan is the strong man. He's stronger than you. But he says, I'm stronger than Satan. Can I hear a praise the Lord? 
That's the one I serve tonight. That's the one I love tonight. And that's the one that keeps me day by day. So I repeat again, and I love to repeat it, Satan is a defeated foe. Would you say it again? <coughs> Listen to Revelation 12 and 11. John says, And they, that is God's people, those that love not their lives unto death, God's people, he says, And they overcame him, the dragon, the serpent, the devil, and Satan. How did they overcome him? By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I remember after Brother Sammy Jemison led me to the Lord as a boy. I went on with the Lord. <coughs> <coughs> Wonderful things <coughs> happened to me. But every now and again, <coughs> in the middle of the night, the devil used to come to me and say to me, you're not really saved, you know. Hands up whom that has happened to. <laughs> you're not really saved, you know. You only think you're saved. You're only saved because your parents are gone. You're only saved because you have nobody to depend on. And you're depending on the Lord. And the Lord's not there. You only think you're saved. And I remember coming home one night from church, and I was a wee bit down, and this godly man came to me, and he says, Are you all right, son? I says, Um. He says, What's troubling you? Haka says, Every now and again, <coughs> the old devil comes to me, and he tells me that I'm not saved. And he, he ruffles me. But I get over him after a few days. But he ruffles me. And then after a few days later, he'll come back again. And he says, Listen. The next time he comes to you and talks to you, talk back to him. I says, well, what will I say? Give him your testimony. Do you know the devil has heard my testimony more than anybody? <laughs> Do you know the devil knows my testimony off by heart? <clears throat> Do you know the devil knows every syllable of my testimony? Because when he came back to me, I started to give him a testimony and he went away. And then he, he came back again after a few months and I started to give him my testimony and he went away. He never comes back now because he knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> Isn't the Lord lovely tonight? They overcame him <clears throat> by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Isn't it lovely? <clears throat> Isn't it lovely tonight? <clears throat> and this is how you can overcome the devil. By the blood of the Lamb. I cover myself with the blood three times a day. It's like taking medicine. A little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. But listen, this is wonderful medicine. As I begin my day, as my day proceeds, as my day ends, I cover myself with the precious blood of the Lamb. Listen to me. The devil can't get past the bloodline. The blood is the demarcation line, and the devil can't get by it. And I just look at the devil, and here's the line, and he's there, and I say, Hi, you can't get me. <laughs> Can I hear a praise the Lord? I'm standing. He's on the other end, and I'm on the other end. You can't get me, because if you pass the bloodline, you know you're destroyed. The blood is the sign, Lord, as we used to sing when we we're kids. The blood is the sign, Lord, that marks us as thine, Lord, and brightly will shine, Lord, at thy coming Again, can I hear a praise the Lord tonight? This is how you can overcome the devil. So listen, it says, And they overcame him, the dragon, devil and Satan, the old serpent, by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And also remind Satan about his defeat at the cross. <clears throat> I want to tell you an experience that happened to me in Bangor in the Red Cliff Hotel. <laughs> I don't know if you call it now, but at that time it was the Red Cliff Hotel. It was about a young teacher. She was an academic. 
beautiful young lady. <laughs> and I was asked to help her. <clears throat> the owner of the hotel was a godly old boy called Dal Lieburn. And I told him, I says, I'm taking this young woman out for lunch. Give us a wee bit of lunch, <clears throat> and I'll talk to her. And she began, and said, Pastor, it's lovely to see you, and it's lovely to see you. You know the usual jargon, the words of greeting. And then when the soup was served, I remember this as well, she changed, and a voice came from her, and the voice says, you're not going to succeed. I've been in this young woman from a child, and I aim to stay there. And I said, but you are going to succeed. I says, dear, take your, take your soup. Now, this is, this is the truth. She was taking her soup, and I was taking mine. The voice again spoke. He says, you're not going to succeed. I own her. I says, no, you don't own her. The one I serve, the one I love owns her. And how are you doing in your school? And what's the children like? Two-way conversation. Did you ever have anything like that? And this is what was going on. Then the soup dishes was lifted. And the voice said, I'm not coming out. I said, yes, you are. And you're going to come out now, and you're going to come out quietly, and you're not going to make any fuss. I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, and I command you to leave the young woman. The young woman slumped over the table and started to weep, and she was set gloriously free. <laughs> now, that was my experience. Now, you can't rob a man of his experience. And I remember Dal Lieburn said, Well, son, well done. I says, God set her free, and she's away happy, and she's rejoicing in the Lord. Isn't the Lord a wonderful Savior? Isn't the Lord a wonderful Savior? See, we don't need to get on and shout and yell and be dramatic. Paul spoke to the young woman in Acts 16 with a spirit of divination. He says, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus to come out of her. And, just, and it says, and he came out that same hour. Mm. No dramatization. Because he had the authority and he had the anointing. And this wonderful thing happened. Reminding Satan about his defeat at the cross shatters him. And I remember saying to the young woman, though the voice that she used was different to her ordinary voice, I said, what happened at Calvary? What do you mean? What happened at Calvary? You know what happened at Calvary, don't you? I'm sitting talking here. You know what happened at Calvary. And then I said a word that is even stronger than Calvary. I said, what happened at Golgotha? <clears throat> Say Golgotha. <clears throat> the place of the skull. <clears throat> I can nearly feel my hair standing up now. <clears throat> what happened at Golgotha? <clears throat> <clears throat> and what happened at Golgotha was that Jesus paid it all. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So plead tonight and claim the merits of the precious blood of Christ. Satan can't stand it. So here I say tonight to you, know your foe. Your foe is not flesh and blood, but his spirit. Don't fear him. There's only a stump of him left. Christ dealt with him a head blow at Calvary, and he hit our Lord on his heel. And thirdly, use spiritual weapons, not carnal. Use the Word of God. Use the blood of the Lamb. And use your personal testimony. And fourthly, resist them. Say, praise the Lord. Say, resist. Yes. Whom resist, says Peter. Look at him. Stand up to him. He's a defeated foe. Resist him. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> Can I hear a praise the Lord? Resist him. Say resist. Resist him. Being steadfast in the faith. And James chapter 4 and 7 says it again. He says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil 
and he will flee from you. In other words, you say, I'm not getting anywhere with him. I'm not getting anywhere with her. She's resisting me. And she's resisting me by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Hands up her enjoying God's word. Oh, I've been carried away. It's late. And you're carried away too, and you don't realize it's late. But of one more scripture, what does God's people say? Listen to this, Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And I wrote this last night before I went to bed. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, that is Peter. Now this is personal, and it's personal for you. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as weak. He knows what I've promised you. <clears throat> he knows what I've given you. And you know, he's actually come to me and told me he desires you because he wants to sift you as weak. <clears throat> How many times has Satan come to our master and said, I would like her. I would like him. And why has he not got me? And why has he not got you? Listen to what the Lord Jesus says to Peter. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Isn't that lovely? I don't care who prays for me. Doesn't matter a row of beans. If 2,500 people in this house tonight didn't pray for me. But if he prays for me, it's everything. Can I hear a praise the Lord? But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now watch this. He told him he would fall. And listen to this, he says. And when thou art restored, strengthen thy brethren. <clears throat> When I've restored you, when I've forgiven you, when I've recommissioned you, your ministry is to strengthen your brethren. Boy, I forget the many times he has restored me. Forget the many times he's strengthened me. And I forget the many times that I've tried to strengthen my brethren. He's a wonderful Savior. Oh, lady, you don't know what you're missing if you don't have Jesus in your life. Sir, tonight, you don't know what you're missing if you don't have Jesus in your life. He's wonderful. He's lovely. And so I'm telling you, trust the Prince of Glory tonight. Trust him with your heart. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your soul. Trust him with everything you have. Because he will never fail you. And all God's people said, Will you bow your head in a word of prayer? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I've only a couple of minutes left as the night has fled. Don't realize how fast this night has went in. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. The Spirit of God is here tonight. Is there a dear man here tonight? Is there a dear woman here tonight? Is there a wee family here tonight and you're in trouble? Is there dear people here tonight and you're being tormented. And I want to tell you every head is bowed and every eye is closed. The only persons who are watching tonight are my pastors and my godly elders. And they're watching. And while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, God is speaking in this great house tonight. Is there a person who would say, Pastor McConnell, would you pray for me? I want to get right with God, and I need to get right with God. If there's one, would you quickly and quietly lift up your hand and take it down again? I see your hand, sir, in the gallery. Thank you. you. may take it down. Is there another one tonight? Quickly. God bless you, young woman. I see your hand. There's another one. The pastor's pointing over there. God bless you. Thank you. I see your hand. There's another one right over there. The pastor's pointing. God bless you. I don't see your hand, but he saw it. God bless you right there. God bless you, young man. Is there another one tonight? Just quickly and quietly. It's God speaking to you. 
Is there somebody here bound by the enemy? Just quickly raise your hand. There's another. God bless you, young woman. Thank you. You may take your hand down in the green jumper. God bless you. Is there another one tonight? Just quickly lift up your hand. Take it down again. I will see it, and I will pray for you. Where are you tonight? Is there another one? Just quickly. Quickly lift up your hand. I'm looking up on the great gallery tonight. Where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? There's one right up there. The pastors are pointing. God bless you. And God bless you there too. Thank you. God bless you. Is there another one? Pastors, there's another one. God bless you right up there at the top. Young man in the white, white vest. God bless him. Is there another one? There's another one. God bless you. You may take your hand down. Thank you. Where are you? Just quickly and quietly. Just quickly. It's Time is flying here. Oh, the Spirit of God is here. Is there another one tonight? Just slip up your hand. Take. There's another one up at the top in the gallery. God bless you. The deacons are pointing. Is there another one? Where are you, friend? There's another one. Deacons pointing right across. God bless you. I don't see it. He sees it. God bless you. God bless you. Right over there. Thank you. Is there another one? Listen, the Spirit of God's here. And Christ loves you and wants you. Many said, Pastor. Twelve people. What does God's people say? Inside a minute. Twelve people. Is there another one? Quickly, is there another one? Just lift up that hand. Take it down again. We'll see it. I know God's speaking. Quickly. Quickly, where are you, sir? <clears throat> where are you, lady? Is there a young man? You're steeped in drugs. You can't get off them. Listen. One touch from the master and he'll set you free. Will you send me to a rehab? No, the rehab's here. The rehab's in his touch. He'll touch you. Just raise your hand, young man. Believe me when I tell you that. Believe me, young woman. Raise your hand. He'll set you free. Is there another one? Quickly and quietly, lift up your hand. Is there somebody steeped in the dregs of alcohol? You can't stop. He can set you free. He can give you a taste of wine. That will satisfy your thirst forever. The wine of his kingdom. Is there another one tonight? Quickly and quietly. Is there another one tonight? Twelve people have raised their hand. Where are you, friend? Where are you? We're going to sing through twice, and then I'm closing this. Just as I am, without one plea. And I want my choir to help me. Because I know there's others, and there's a fight going on. There's a struggle. The devil says, don't you believe him? Friend, the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. That voice that's talking to you, Jesus said, is the voice of the stranger. But he says, my sheep hear my voice. And is there a desire in your heart welling up? Because you've heard his voice. Come and trust him tonight. We're going to sing it, every Christian. Are you ready? Just as I... <laughs> is there another one? Where are you up in the gallery? Where are you? Where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? Just slip up your hand. Take it down again. Um, is there another one? Is there another one? Come on. Oh, where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? I come. This is the final time I'm singing it, and I'm waiting on that hand. Listen, this final moment, raise that hand. Don't let the devil control you for the rest of your life. He's a defeated foe. Christ offers you life with a capital L, serp a life with surplus. Life with quality. This is the last time. Are you ready then? Just uh, the last time. Is there another? God bless you. See your hand, dear friend. God bless you. Had that raised a long time. God bless you. Is there another one? <laughs> is there another one? <laughs> Where are you, friend? Where are you? Come on, raise that hand. There's another one that deacon's pointing. God bless you. God bless you. Right over there. Lovely. Is there another one? Is there one more? Is there one more tonight? Is there one more?
That's 14 people. 14 people. Now quickly, is there a man here tonight that trusted the Savior? Years ago, is there a woman here tonight that trusted the Savior? But you drifted and Satan has been reinstated in your life. Oh, that can be a terrible, dangerous thing. You know, because the evil spirit goeth through dry places seeking rest. And he says, I will return to the house in which I came out. He goeth and he taketh seven more spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. Jesus said that in Mark's gospel. Is there a backslider tonight? Is there a man that drifted? Is there a woman that drifted? And you've allowed Satan to get in. Would you raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Is there one tonight? Quickly. Is there a backslider here tonight? Is there one? Quickly. God bless you. The deacon's pointing. He sees one over there. God bless you. Is there another one? Quickly. Is there another? There's a one upstairs. God bless you. Pastor's pointing. God bless you. Is there another one? Don't reinstate the enemy of your soul. He'll control you. He'll destroy you. Is there one more? Is there one more tonight? Quickly and quietly. Is there one more? Just slip up your hand. Take it down again. I'll see it. I'm asking for the very last time. Is there one more tonight? Would you just slip up that hand? Where are you, backslider? Then we'll leave it with you. And may God bless you. Many's that, Pastor. 16 people. What does the Lord's people say? See those 16 people? Let's encourage them and welcome them into the fold of God. <laughs> now listen to those 16 people. Please don't leave. I tell you what to do. We'll not keep you. As soon as I pronounce the benediction, will you go, as you go downstairs, as you turn to go out, on the left-hand side in the foyer is a room called the McGee Room. It's a lovely library. Pastor Mark Penny will be there. Pastor David Murray will be there. Van and Bobby Young will be there. Give them your name and address. They will give you some literature and encourage you and pray with you and then let you get home. Or, or why don't you go up to the restaurant and get a cup of tea? It'll help you. Get a wee drop of orange. Get a wee sandwich. Have a bit of fellowship and get strengthened. But don't go away from that room because if you go outside, you know what's going to happen? The fowls of the air are out there. And Jesus talked about the fowls of the air. He says, they swoop down and they take the seed that's in the heart. <laughs> and he says, the fowls of the air is Satan. He says, Satan, the evil one cometh. And you see, every time you pray the Lord's Prayer, when you say, deliver us from evil, say that after me. That is not the original translation. Look up in the Greek New Testament, it reads, deliver us from the evil one. Now you check on the Greek on me. Check away. Deliver us from the evil one. That's what the master said. So let's remember that. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Can I hear it again? So would you do that? We're going to pray this prayer. Put your hands out. It's 20 past 8 and you're going home. Are you ready? Father, I come to thee in the precious and worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the living God. I ask you to save me for time and eternity. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and to come into my heart and to make me clean. Take me now, a guilty, hell-deserving sinner. Change my life. Set me free. Set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said, hands up who have enjoyed this series. Of one left, would you like to hear it? Next Sunday night, the battle of the giants. Two giants in a ring, 36 miles long. 16 miles away. The battle of the giants. And this time our giant is the man Christ Jesus. 
not in his angelic fullness or power as he was pre-eternity, but as a human anointed by God's Spirit. And he takes on the devil. Actually, it's not a fair match at all. The devil, the devil has greater power if you look at it at the outward appearance. But here is this young man of 30 years of age in the wilderness being tempted of the devil. Listen, it's a tremendous story. Listen, make the hair stand on your head. I was looking at, reading it the other night, and says, I was in it. I was there. I was standing beside my master. I was fighting away with him. I was standing away. And I said, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. So will you bring your friends along and hear it next Sunday night? Do you know, the old devil was busy. The Belfast Telegraph never put in our advert. But thank God for this great crowd tonight. And there's people who are in great need. And I'm going to see the telegraph tomorrow. Oh, I can't let this go. I'm going to see them. And listen, just pray that the Lord will be with me and that the Lord's name will be glorified. Say, praise the Lord. Say it again. Oh, he's a wonderful Savior. So, will you go into the McGee room and the Lord bless you and the Lord lead you on with his lovely self. It's just one minute after 20 past eight. Say, praise the Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice once, and then I'll pronounce the benediction. Are you ready? Come on. Put your hands out. I love you, Lord. It's been a wonderful night. Could we shout praise the Lord? Could we shout Satan is a defeated foe? <laughs> Let's come out next Sunday night. What I've got for you, I tell you, we'll be swinging on the rafters. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest, remain, and abide upon us until Jesus comes. Amen. God bless you, Savior.